Recently we've been trying to broaden our horizons, trying lots of types of fishing and trying to catch just as many species as possible. We were doing trout fishing, fly fishing for other species as well, lure fishing, we've done lots of that for pike and perch recently. But this weekend we've travelled seven hours north to Northumberland to try and catch the mighty salmon, one of the hardest fish to catch in the UK. And what better person to guide us than a local expert? Hi, my name's James Stoker, one of BBC's A Big Fish. I've been fishing for about 20 years now, I'd say. Salmon angler from day one. The first fish I ever caught, believe it or not, on my 13th birthday, was a 13 pound salmon. I'll never forget it. My dad's friend took us down the river to just to, to watch some fish, really. And you just, when you get down there, I think when, when you know you enjoy something, it just, it clicks like that. He gave us a rod. I think I had about five or six casts and caught a fish. But no, I've been doing it for about 20 years now. and. I stopped for a while when I got into my 20s because you know what it's like, you get into drinking, you get into cars, you just lose a little bit of interest but then I got back into it when I was about 25, 26 and it's the best thing I've ever done. just gone six in the morning, we stood outside James's house, the sun's just coming up and today we're going salmon fishing. I live in a small town called Hexham, which is in Northumberland. It's in between Newcastle and Carlisle, just close to the borders of Scotland. You probably pick it up with my accent. I'm, it's from near Newcastle. I'm based on the River Tyne. I literally live 300 yards away from the river, so it's just too handy. I've only ever really fished the Tyne. I mean, when you see how good this fishing is and how beautiful this place is, it's hard to go anywhere else. I mean, I was all over the world last year, and, and sometimes it's hard to beat back home. We just got down to the river and right in front of us, like as soon as we got here we saw him jump right out. The rods are ready, what have you got on that? Um, this is just like a little orange with parlor, um, it's not a genuine one, it's a bit of a snide one but yeah. you've got one of the most popular lures um, that I use when I'm not fly fishing, the flat wrap rapala, blue and silver. Okay. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't hook up within the first 10-15 minutes of that because with the first people down here there's fish jumping already I think we need to get straight in the water we need too to get excited. our rods in. I don't know who's more excited than me or Alex I think he's more excited <laughs> The reason I've brought the lads up to the, the tine is because it's so prolific. The, the amount of different stretches, locations, whether it's high or low water, but mainly because the runs of fish. We get over 40,000 fish migrating a year. That's what's counted through the fish pass. There'll be other fish that slip through, but 40,000 fish throughout February through to sort of October time. If, as the months go on, the numbers increase. The main reason is it's the back end of the year. There's fish that have been travelling throughout the whole year that are backing up and backing up and backing up and I just knew there was a good chance of putting the lads on fish. Oh, no way! <laughs> what? You can get the rod. No, no, you haven't. No, honestly. You can get the are you sure? Yeah. Okay, then. Get us. Thanks, man. That's definitely great on something. Oh, oh come on. 
It was cut. It was like rubbing on something. Oh, I feel it going around the back of a rock or something. It's grating loads. That was a good fish. That fought so hard. The main reason I fish for salmon is I've got that much respect for the fish themselves, what they go through in their life cycle. It's one of the hardest fish to catch. No disrespect to other types of angling and other fish, but these fish don't actually feed in the river. So you're, there's a load of different elements that come into play, and especially catching them on the fly, it's just like, it's like an extension of your arm. The, the rod line, there's no weight, it's just you and a piece of carbon. And when you hook one of these fish, it's, it's, it's hard to compare it to any other fish because they, they act so differently. It's, there's so much, sometimes you get little plucks, sometimes you get aggressive takes, huge hundred yard runs, leaping out the water. It's just that they're a magnificent fish. Yep, guys. It's ripping. Oh, and it jumps again. <laughs> this is so epic. Oh my god! Yes, that is in. Is it? Get in! <laughs> oh, yes! Get in, mate! That is a monster! Oh, nice. You alright? Well done! <laughs> Get in, we've done it! That is, a, that is a creature! Well done, mate, look at that! Look at this! That stuff. is a fish, mate, we've done it! And there you have it, my first salmon caught in the UK. Thank you so much, James. Well done, mate. I'm buzzing for you. This what a fish. This wouldn't have happened without you, man. You've what got, a fish. Put us on the fish. Put us on the right lures. We've been here about an hour and a half, I'd say. <laughs> Alex has lost yes. one. And Carl's has landed one. That fish has got to be 15, 16 pounds. What a fish. I'll tell you something now. What a scrap. It's flipping heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him, man. He's ready to go. Boom. Happy days. Look at the size of it. Thank you so much. <laughs> well well done. Over the moon for you. Now let's go and get Alex on. Your turn. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Your turn, yeah. So the salmon life cycle is quite complex. They go through a lot of changes and they travel a lot of miles. They start in the river as a small fry. They feed, they turn into a salmon paw, which resembles a small brown trout. We can tell the difference because they've got like fingerprints on them. Then when they get to a certain size and age, I think it's maybe three, three to four years, they turn into what we call a salmon smoke, the sea trout smoke. They turn silver and they actually head back to sea. Nobody knows the exact location of them, which is probably good because it just, it means they don't get overfished, but they swim thousands and thousands of miles towards, if it's Greenland way, and then some fish after a year return, some fish stay two to three years and return. They tend to be the bigger fish, but they swim thousands of miles back to the same river, which they can smell when they get close. They've got a good memory. Um, they smell the water, they come up the river, they even smell which tributary or stream they've come in, which is insane if you think about it. They've swam thousands of miles. It's like a built-in sat-nav. I mean, I get lost, I could get lost in Hexham and it's a small town, but these fish, they're amazing. They have to battle up rivers over weirs, rocks, dodging seals, cormorants, otters. That's why you've got to have respect for them. They go through a hell of a lot in a lifetime. And for me, that's why I like to return the fish because of what they've gone through. If you traveled or walked that far and someone pulled out the river and knocked on head, you'd be gutted. <laughs> you know what I mean?
Let's go. Oh. <laughs> hey, you've got a beautiful little salmon, mate. Job done. Well done, mate. First salmon. Yeah. They oh. give you a good scrap to oh, I wasn't sure whether the six hour drive up here was going to be worth it. <laughs> it's always worth it, mate. Uh, yeah, now that both Carl and I have put us out, it's done. been worth it. Job done, man. Yeah. After you lost that one this morning, mate, I was good at food, but you've done it. Most important bit. Look at that. Well done. <laughs> Get in. The aim of the game is to keep on the move, so soon we were back on the road to another spot on the river. Sight fishing is one of the most exciting types of fishing for us. When we go carp fishing and we're fishing on the surface, you see the carp come up to the bait and you just know when it's going to happen. Whereas this salmon fishing we've been doing for the last couple of days is at the opposite end of the spectrum. The tapes come out of nowhere. You can be fishing for hours and hours, not having a touch, not seeing anything, and then suddenly, bang. Only five minutes later, I also landed a salmon. However, this one managed to escape before getting any photos. So there's many different techniques and tactics you can use for catching salmon. The two main ones are spinning and fly fishing. Certain areas you can prone fish. I mean, a lot of people don't like it because it can have an adverse effect. Sometimes it can be good, sometimes it can be bad, but nothing quite beats fly fishing for me. It's a bit of an art form and it's just, I don't know, it's everything that comes with it. The, the lightness of the rod, there's no weight or heavy lures you're casting and nothing quite compares. You hook a salmon, like a decent sized salmon on a fly and it's just, it's, it's magical. I mean, this year I've had a phenomenal year of catching salmon, especially on the fly. I've had, I would say I've had maybe three or four fish over 15, 15 to sort of 18 pounds on the fly. And it's, it's just, it, you can't compare it to anything else. That's why fly fishing is becoming so popular for different species in this country and worldwide, because it's just, it's, it's I don't know, there's something about it. Once, once you try it, you'll understand. So that was the plan for tomorrow, to try and catch the salmon on the fly. But for now, we headed back to James's house to charge all our batteries and have some dinner. Just charging some batteries from today. And another one, and another one, and a whole load more. James's arms are aching because of all the massive salmon he caught today. No, oh. <laughs> my arms are aching from all the blooming netting I've been doing today. <laughs> That's the way Get we in. like it. <laughs> so Alex is watching back some footage from today and trying to check back and watch the bites that we've got on camera. And over here, James has just shown me this crazy thing where you can go online and check the catch report. So today's, these are all today's beats. These are the, the, the day ticket beats which you can actually purchase. Um, and it gives you like during the day, how many sea trout have been called, how many salmon, the weights, the areas. So we flick down to Saturday, 
which is today, and we've got Warden, which is a beach we were fishing. There's been a lot of people fishing down there today. There's been four salmon caught all day. Um, <laughs> Alex has caught two, and Carl's caught two, so all the salmon caught on the Warden beats have been by these two guys. There's been one sea trout caught, and that was caught by Phil that was with us today as well. So it's just a handy little lap. You can see what's been caught. It gives you the river heights and what areas are fishing well. Um, I think that's a nice thing about um, a game angling. People do share a lot of a lot of information between mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. Um, but it's just nice to see that obviously you guys, you can see how well you've done. There's been a lot of people fishing. I'm no surprised. one's caught anything. I'm it's just surprised. it's one of those days. Like I say, it's not like this all the time, but. Um, Great effort today, man. It just that, just that just tops it off for me. We woke up early to get to the river before sunrise to hopefully give us the best chance of catching another salmon. We both gave the fly fishing a go after James taught us the double handed spay cast but sadly the salmon weren't in the mood for taking. So yesterday we were extremely lucky landing four salmon in total, but today we've seen the other side of salmon fishing. You don't catch every time and yesterday we were extremely lucky. Sadly though, we've run out of time. It's Sunday afternoon and we've got to be on our seven hour journey home. Although it was a long way to travel, it was definitely worth it and we will be salmon fishing again soon.